more. Okay, so f who's not here? Florence? And, and Nora. Nora. Aqua and they still talking. Wait. Oh, yeah. They're in the restaurant. Oh, someone's in the restaurant? In the restaurant? Well, that's okay. <laughs> They're coming. Well, that's all right. Does anyone know any jokes? Oh, exactly. Well, no. Well, what, well, I know what I'm going to start with while we're waiting for the other two. So one thing I alluded to at the beginning is that because we have all of these eight people who are of the same generation, there's a lot of connections. Taryn, you already alluded to this, but I want to hear more. So you and Cynthia were at RADA at the same time. Yes. But there was, a, there was an interaction. So yeah, so many, um, many moons ago, before Cynthia Revo was a two-time Academy Award nominated <laughs> EGOT threatening mega legend. Uh, um, I, uh, I, was, I arrived in London as a sort of fresh-faced 19-year-old and um, uh, I went to drama school rather and Cynthia was in her third year and I was in my first and I was a sort of scatty... Uh, Nightmare, much like I am now, actually. You were charming, um, but, um, very charming. But, um, but so I, I will always remember outside the library, one day in my first term, uh, Cynthia sort of walked up to me uh, proffering an apple. And, um, and, and she said, you need this because you need to keep your energy up. And it was, um, uh, it was just the most kind... Um, lovely, genuine gesture, uh, and I can personally vouch for the fact that uh, Cynthia's talent is only matched by her kindness and warmth and loveliness as a person. I did the same thing. Right? Okay. <laughs> they didn't wash my hands. No. Cynthia, do you... <laughs> You've got to say nice things about me now. No. Do, you, do you remember that? Yes, I think we was. I think were we coming out of the library? We, yes. Yes, coming out of the library. I just, I just, I don't know. There was something about him. I was like, I... I think, uh... I have a girlfriend. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I, no, I just, the, and I also, I did, had I heard you sing at that point as well? Oh. No, I don't think so. And actually, we used to, so, uh, occasionally we'd do these kind of, like, no, sometime nights, yeah. wouldn't we, in the bar, and we'd sing together, and I'd be sort of, very, very average, and Cynthia would no, blow everyone away. No, average at all. He were not. He was not average. There was something about him when I first saw him, and I thought that. I just knew how difficult it was in the first year, and knew how uh, hard it could get, and I knew that sometimes you just needed someone to, like, see you. Um, and I saw him, and I thought, this might be helpful. And I always carried, like, snacks in my bag, because I knew that you were always... Like, this is a thing I learned from the first and second year. Don't, don't go without snacks now. So I... <laughs> so. He's one of those really annoying people who carries <laughs> snacks, but is still very slim. Whereas I <laughs> carry snacks and put pans on very, very... <laughs> That's why the snacks is... An, you carry good snacks. That's why you carry apples. The right snack. The right snack. And I just wanted to, I just wanted to let him know that someone was um, there for him. That's I love all. it. Yeah. Uh, so, Beanie and Nora, I want to hear more about Neighbors, Neighbors 2. Two, you, yeah, two. How well did you guys get to know each other on that? Really well. We lived in the same hotel, right? <laughs> it was such a weird hotel. We had a, a couple fun trips, you know? <laughs> <laughs> trips. With, without getting too much in detail, it was very fun. Yeah. It was, uh, it was both of our first films, so we were, like, excited and very green. Yeah, Beanie was like, why are you high all the time? And I'm like, what? Um, <laughs> but um, it, was, it was very, I was, I'm method. I'm method. <laughs> all right? <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> But also, there's another connection between Beanie and Florence, which is Sir Ronan. Because there's the lady... And Greta. Birth and Greta. And Greta, of course. But now, is there competition between the two of you over, like, who's tighter with Saoirse? No! <laughs> that was very high-pitched. <laughs> I felt like that was an admission. Is that an admission? No. No! What does that even mean? There's enough, yeah, there's that's enough not a thing. To go around. There's so much Sersha to go around. <laughs> um, no, I, I worship 
Florence, she knows, she knows how I feel about her. Oh. Um, but I am obsessed with her in, in that film, and that movie. I got to, Greta let me see it really early, and I was just like uh. broken and cried for four hours after, and I was like, all I want to do is meet Florence because I feel like we're part of a sisterhood now. I'm just naming myself as like the fifth March sister, basically. <laughs> <laughs> they had a beanie march, a didn't they? There will be a second Little Women, so, you know, sign yourself up. I love it. Um, and it was fun for me, Florence and George, to see you guys run into each other backstage. And Florence, you seem to be a big fan of 1917. As Massive I'm. fan of 1917. I met George, yeah, 1917. We can applause that. Oh my God. Um, I, we met a few years back at a really weird table read through. A table reading that was for a film that Dexter Fletcher was <laughs> developing at the time. <laughs> And I did a film with Dexter years ago as well. So that's how I've heard about Taryn so much. Oh my God, that's amazing. We're all connected. I love it. <laughs> We're all related. Okay, so I have some questions. I have some questions for all of you guys that we're going to come. Escape what? Room. Escape room? Escape room, there you go. That's, that's what, Stop giving that that's guy what Taylor's up to. All right, so here's, here's my first question. So <laughs> when Beanie was on stage with me, we were talking about Say Anything and Breakfast Club, movies that were kind of like my seminal coming of age movies. I want to know what they were for you guys. Like what are what are your kind of touchstone movies? Anyone jump in? I have a couple. For me it's like The Color Purple and Mahogany. Have anyone seen Mahogany? Yeah. With Diana Ross. Diana Ross. That that's probably okay. one of those things. I just it there's something about the style of it, the the look of it, her in it, and then obviously the color purple, which is basically the reason I'm here. It's like yeah. the beginning. Yes. Uh. So yeah, yeah. Who else? Aldis? For some reason, uh, I remember growing up on like uh, the Lost Boys. Lost Boys. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But then juxtapose that with Bad Boys. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Very timely. Yes. Funny girl. Yes. Hi. Yeah, my third birthday was Funny Girl themed. Um, none of the children understood the theme, but the parents got a kick out of it. So, Beanie, Beanie, how do you feel about Funny Lady? You know, I've never seen it. You must. What about Isn't that mental? insane? You have got to see it. Okay, I'll see it. I'll do anything you tell me okay. to do. You know that. <laughs> Taryn. Uh, yeah, my mind's frantically uh, searching for something high, bro, but I can't do it. The Muppets Christmas Carol. Yeah. <laughs> Respect. It's your go-to. Uh, it's one of you know, it's it's one of those movies that gives me a warm, fuzzy glow. I'm gonna I'm gonna be totally honest and say that I asked Taron about what his favorite movie was. He said Muppets Christmas. And then I asked him, who was your favorite character? Was it Miss Piggy? And she was like, to be honest, she didn't shine that much. And I told her, I told him, don't tell Miss Piggy that because she would be pissed. <laughs> she would be pissed. George? It's like heartfelt favorites, The Jungle Book. Like I watched The Jungle Book every day. And then, but then in terms of like a proper favorite film, Gladiator was the first DVD yeah. that we had. Okay. And I was obsessed with the making of as much as the film and just used to watch it and nerd out on that and just be fascinated that the, the actors, when they talked in the interviews, didn't have the same accents as in the story. And being like, what? <laughs> um, bend it like Beckham. Yeah. <laughs> I remember being really crap at playing football and pretending like I was amazing because of that film. And that's all a, a girl needs, basically. Bit of confidence, fake confidence. Well done. Nora? Um, I really loved my cousin Vinny. That, was, that influenced me a lot. Um, and I'd also like to shout out Scary Movie influenced me a lot. Influenced me a lot. Um, I, the Mummy... Oh. I, yeah. I don't know. I watched The Mummy like every single day before I went to school when I was seven, and I just loved oh, yeah. it. So. I love it. Well, so crazy. there's one thing that, you, that a lot of you on this stage have in common, which is that you've played or are in the middle of playing or have just played real people. Uh, so obviously, Taryn's here for, for Rockman, for Elton. Cynthia, you've just played Aretha Franklin for Nat Geo um, Genius. George, you've played Dave Davies from the Kinks, am I right? Or oh, no, 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 that, that never happened. But, oh, well, shit. I know, bugger. Well, but, that's but, too bad. But, 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 but Ned something Kelly was real, so there was one. All right, something to look forward to. Well, I would like to see that. I'm Beanie wearing his shoes tonight, though. Okay, so. good. 
And Beanie, you have played Monica Lewinsky for Not yet, Crime but Story, but you will. I will, And yeah. then, Aldous, are you playing Jim Brown? Yeah, I'm that, playing Jim okay. Brown right now. Yeah. All right, so with the football player. So what, what other famous people would you all like to play one day? I think I know what your answer is, Taylor Russell. Me? Yeah. Oh, you know my answer? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Well, it's because I say it all the time. <laughs> Eartha Kitt, Eartha Kitt, yeah. Eartha Kitt. Tenfold. Yeah. yeah. Was- Not now, though. When I'm older, right. obviously. I look a bit too young right now. No? But- okay. <laughs> No, I can't. No, you're not too young. Oh, if, uh-huh. you, if you think I'm not, then I'll I'll play her tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who else has secret desires to play someone? If I had the bone structure, I'd play David Bowie a hundred percent. David Bowie is is my absolute hero, and he's the only person I've ever mourned who I didn't meet. You know, and and uh, yeah, if only I, you know, wasn't quite as square as I am, I would. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> would, uh, There's makeup that. for that. I mean, we've seen Bombshell and Darkest Hour, so things can happen. Who else? Down there? A uh, Blondie, just because she's so cool. Um, and I grew up pretending I was Dusty Springfield. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and because she had a really low voice, and I was like, hey, I have a low <laughs> voice too. <laughs> Those two. Nora, do you have, you have a secret? The Hulk. <laughs> I would kill that. You know I would kill it. You know I would kill it. <laughs> Any other wishes from this side of the stage? Um, oh, there's a this guy. Um, his name's Aldous Hodge. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd play him. I'd see that movie. I'd play him. It's a sexy guy. Yeah, there oh, you no, go. No. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, I, I, if and when it happens, I would love to play Serena Williams. The audience gasped. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah. And she'll I have sing. No breath. And she'll yes. sing. <laughs> yes. You know, I was asked this question like two years ago and my before I knew anything, my answer was Monica. No. Yeah, so I feel like my dreams are, I mean, we haven't started yet, but my dreams are coming true. It's great. Really. But would you okay, a couple last things. So, um, I want to get this right. Nora and Taryn, you guys did Variety Actors on Actors together, which yep. is this great show. It's on YouTube. It's like a half hour interview that they interview each other. It's really fun. I feel like karaoke, and you guys did it too? Oh, you guys did it too? Florence Beanie and I did it. did it. Okay. And Florence and Beanie did it too. But I feel like in your episode, karaoke came up, and were you guys talking about singing my way? No, I said that when you go to karaoke with white people, there's always that one guy <laughs> that, that finds the need to do my way, and then everyone's listening, and we're like... And then I immediately did I... my way. <laughs> <laughs> who, else, who else has a go-to karaoke number? And mine is Faith, George Michael. Nice. What's yours? What's mine? Um, if there's a... <laughs> uh, we Don't Need Another Hero by Tina Turner. We don't need another hero from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Okay, great. What else? Kind of ashamed. Uh, my brother, Edwin, where you at? Throw it up. You know, what's up? I see him. You know our song. You know our karaoke song. Gold Digger. <laughs> Gold Digger. Gold Digger. Gold Digger. Mm-hmm. She gave me money. Oh! You're loving me. Go on, go on. No, go no. On. Go on. First of all, I'm not going to sing in front I'm, of you. Now you, you have to start now. You Do started. you know who you, you are? You started, so you have to finish. What I look like. You started. <clears throat> I didn't do my warm-up. You, me, 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 me. Taryn, help me out, bro. You, you know the song? Me. I need some backup. Come on. <clears throat> yeah? Go on. You started. <laughs> yes, she's a trifling. Yes, come on. Indeed, oh, she's a gold digger. <laughs> Way over town, the digs on me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, I ain't saying she a gold digger. Uh, but oh, like y'all don't know the song. You did it, though. You did it. 
I did. Amazing. You know what? You know, what? <clears throat> you know, they don't pay me to sing. I know, sorry. They pay me to act. I act. I, I know. They pay me to sing. That, yeah. <laughs> and they're going to give you awards to sing, too. I mean, he did that. I feel like we need a little Tina Turner beyond Thunderdome. We don't need another hero. We don't need to find a way home. All we want is life beyond the Thunderdome. Best day of my yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd get you all to like Christy name a song. This is my beyond team. my wildest dream. Does anyone dare to follow that? Hell no. <laughs> what are you, gonna do? Not, you can't follow Cynthia Eva. Okay, true. maybe you can. <laughs> uh, I've done a lot of Alton. Do it. So maybe I'll do a bit of George. Hey, bro. Get well, it. I guess it will be nice if I could touch your body. I know not everybody has got a body like you. Yes. Oh. Yes. You see what okay. you started. All right, I know. I saw. Okay. See what you started. I did, and I'm so happy right now. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna spare I'm gonna spare you all unless you want to be. Okay, so I want to end with the way that I always end this night, which is to get everybody on this stage to recommend to all of these phenomenal, enthusiastic people one movie that came out this year that maybe they haven't seen, something that you think everyone in this room should know about. I'm gonna start to give you guys a couple seconds to think about it. And my favorite movie of 2019 was called Portrait of a Lady on Fire, which was a beautiful French love story that unfortunately France did not submit as its entry to the Oscar race. It would have been nominated if it was, but it's coming out on Valentine's Day and I think everyone in this room should see it. It's a beautiful, beautiful period film that I just adore, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Aldous, what is your recommendation? I mean, y'all got to start with me first. Yeah. Uh, well, for me, well, I will say this just because I was most surprised by this film, even though we heard a lot about it. Um, I was most surprised by Parasite because I didn't know what I was walking into. And uh, I, was, I was really quite uh, impressed and enthused. It was, it was fantastic storytelling, the way they wrapped it up. I was like, how y'all going to finish this to make it interesting? And they did, and I was like, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> Beanie? I don't know. There have been so many. I mean, I, it's not just because she's on the stage, but the farewell took my heart. Absolutely. Good choice. Um, I'm going to cheat and do two. Do it. Uh, she is on stage, but I watched it on a plane and I was crying my eyes out and laughing at the same time. If you haven't seen Booksmart, please see it. Yes. Be hilarious. Um, and uh, Queen and Slim, because it's heartbreaking, please. Queen Slim is fantastic. Yeah. Taryn. Um, so, not many people saw it. It's a tiny movie. It's called Rocket Man. It's from... <laughs> I saw it. Everybody saw it. Uh, no, uh, my favorite movie of the last year is a movie called The Peanut Butter Falcon. Um, uh, uh, I think Shia LaBeouf and Dakota are incredible in it. And... Uh, uh, Zachary Gottsorg and I just think he's absolutely extraordinary in it. It's a really beautiful heartwarming tale and I was totally moved and mesmerized by it. Great. Great pick. George? Mine's a, f a film that came out in the cinemas, I think in November back in, in London, but I only saw it recently, The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Yes! And that was just the most beautiful film, I thought, like, the performances, the way it was shot, the music, I've, I haven't stopped listening to the soundtrack since, and that's just a, a gorgeous film. Great. I agree with that. I don't know if it came out last year or if I watched it last year, but Ryder, oh, right. which, did it come out last year? Am I right? It's, it's about the real life of a cowboy uh, this day and age, and it's like, 
absolutely brutal. And the guy is a real life cowboy. And the person who's in it who suffers from that storyline is a real life cowboy who had his life completely changed because he got hit badly. It was utterly amazing. And I really, really loved it. Great. Yeah, I love The Matrix. Um, it was so good. <laughs> Actually, one movie I really enjoyed, and that's why I'm a little starstruck sitting here, is, is I really loved Waves, and I thought that you were absolutely incredible in it. Um, and also, don't, don't F with cats. That one got me. Why? Why would you it do that? It got me. <laughs> God damn it. So stressful. Didn't so expect good. that. So good. Taylor. Um, Atlantics, Maddie Diop. It's on Netflix. Atlantics, it's Atlantics, great. Atlantics, yeah. Yeah. That's the Senegalese yeah. foreign film. It was submitted, but they, unfortunately the Academy didn't nominate it, but it's a great ghost story. I know. Great ghost story and worth seeing. Um, great choices, guys. And unexpected and great. Okay, so now I have the honor, as I do every year, of bringing out a legend. Santa Barbara's own three-time Emmy winner to help us present the trophies, Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> Do you believe, do you believe the talent in front of you? <laughs> Amazing. It says here that I am happy to represent, to present the Santa Barbara International Festival Virtuoso Word, Awards. Wow, I didn't do this well. And I, but I'm not going to do it again. Um, I am more than happy. I mean, I, I just, to see what you've all done is just breathtaking. Thank you. Thank you. The Virtue Oso Awards go to Aldous Hodge. Aquafina. Bini Felstein. Cynthia Arrivo. Florence Pugh. George McKay. <laughs> Terry Edgerton. <laughs> and Taylor Russell. <laughs> 